Hi guys. So uh, it's time for me to do a network upgrade. I've been using uh, two Linksys access points for the last five years to serve me both as one of them as uh, both router and access point, and the other one just bridge to be an access point to cover my house. This has been working okay, not great. Uh, one shortage is that you know the guest network can only work on one of the, the access points, uh, so that doesn't cover really the, my entire house. And I'm also now seeing uh, problems, you know, you know uh, some of the connections dropping. I'm, I'm guessing, you know, it's because really I have way too many uh, Wi-Fi enabled devices now compared to, to what I had five years ago. So, so you know, the, these are not really yeah, uh, scaled to, to, to what I'm, I'm doing now in my house. So, uh, time for an upgrade and I went the Ubiquiti way. So uh, I, I've really been hearing good things uh, from about Ubiquiti, uh, high quality products. You know, uh, it's some you know a lot of uh, companies use this, but uh, but also you know what we could term uh, prosumers, so uh, professional consumers. Uh, nice word. So so what I've done here is I've uh, I've bought a little. Uh, this is uh, uh, this stuff is around five hundred euros all in all. So I've, I've got two Nano HD uh, access points uh, to cover my house, hopefully, uh, they will do, do it. Uh, I have the, um, the USG, the security gateway, uh, which is uh, going to be my new router basically, uh, and also should be able to do deep packet inspection. Uh, I have a PoE switch. Uh, so. A lot of uh, Ubiquiti stuff is powered by uh, power or Ethernet or PO, uh, PoE. Um, I'm not sure, you know, uh, so you can also hear I have two PoE adapters. So basically an adapter is uh, where you have a normal uh, uh, sort of a power adapter and you then inject that into the network cable if you don't have a PoE switch. So why do I both you know, buy a PoE switch and uh, a PoE adapter? Two reasons. So one, uh, the PoE switch uh, from Ubiquiti doesn't only serve you know, as a PoE switch, it also uh, will enable me to do more you know, intelligent traffic monitoring of my uh, non um, Wi-Fi network. I have a fairly big uh, cabled uh, network in my house, so uh, so I will connect that uh, through this also to do inspection. So that's the part of it. The other part is that I'm not sure that uh, my existing wiring will enable me to go in t directly from my uh, from this switch that I'm going to put in my my central uh, yeah, hub uh, to where I'm going to put these. So. This is just, uh, these aren't that expensive really, it's, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, what are they, uh, 20 euros, something like that, uh, so it's, it's not that bad, um, so this is just a fallback, so I, I don't run into the problems that I have to run the wires from, from these to these. Um, so this is the cloud key. Uh, all of this is uh, what you can call a controlled network and you need uh, some software or a cloud key to, uh, to sort of to do all the managing and also the logging of the traffic. And so you basically have to do a software option but I don't have a server and I don't want a server running uh, all the time on my, in my house. Um, so this is uh, like 100 euros. Uh, and will will uh, yeah do that job for me so do I so do I do not have uh, the need for for building a server. You can all also do if you have uh, an, a network attached storage device that uh, supports uh, Ubiquiti's uh, software. That might be all an option for you. Mine is not uh, new enough to to do that trick. So also I had uh, to go with the, with this option. So basically uh, yeah uh, good times here. Uh, and, and, and what I, I hope to aim here is, of course, to have much more stable and, and better network. I, I, I also would like to segregate my network so that my uh, IoT devices that I have fairly uh, big amount of these days are segregated into one network that is 
totally different from or, or segregated from my normal network, and this is due to the yeah many reports of IoT devices being not always that secure really. So so if if one of them have a security flaw, I hopefully can you know limit the damage that, that someone would be able to do on me if if they were to intrude on my network. The other thing I want to do is to uh, have a better guest uh, access that is covered by my entire house and not where, up until now with my current setup where it's really like half of my house that is, is, is covered probably by the, the guest network. So uh, yeah, starting point here is to, to uh, get the gateway, uh, gateway uh, the switch and the, the cloud key uh, set up. That's really the you know the base, uh, and then I'll have to to get the these suckers uh, set up. But uh, I'll start by by getting this working because this is sort of the yeah the premises uh, for, for for getting that. This comes later. So so first the gateway, the switch, and the and the cloud key. Okay, so uh, I think I got it all mounted here in my tech closet. Um, so here is the um, the security gateway. The, the router, if you will. Um, the black wire is then connected to my fiber box. So this is where my internet comes into my house. Uh, so this is the sort of the first uh, contact. This is a, a non-DHCP unit uh, and this one will run DHCP. So the gray wire runs down to my uh, unified switch. Uh, uh, and uh, there I've hooked up, I have an additional two switches, you can see here and here, and those pretty much uh, connect to the other rooms in my my house. So um, so these four ports, uh, the, the first one is the ingoing, and then the three others, you know, distribute to, to, the, to the other routers that I have that are non-unify. Uh, I'll have to change that over time. Um, to the last connector of the switch, there, there are eight. I have connected the cloud key. So the last four of the ports uh, on the on the switch are, uh, are PoE. So you can see here that it's just basically a short uh, network cable here that boots up the, the cloud controller. So what I'll need to do now is um, to uh, to get those tied into the, an account that I'll have to create so that, the, that I can set up my basic network uh, yeah, settings basically. Also, I'll need to define my Wi-Fi settings um, that uh, that comes in later when I, I hook up the, the access points. So, um, yeah, off to a PC. Okay, so this is the Unify administration software that you use to set up your network and to maintain it, look at logs and stuff like that. Uh, this part of the video is being recorded six months after I purchased the devices. Uh, and just in that period, it had had uh, two major updates to... Uh, this administration software. So it may look different when you are doing this yourself from when I'm showing you this. Um, the principles uh, though seems to remain pretty much the same and that is that you have these tabs where the main one is the dashboard where you can see uh, the capacity of uh, the, your uh, LAN, how many clients that are connected, your access points, switches and stuff like that. Uh, you won't spend too much time here. In the statistics uh, page, you can. Uh, I'll find myself go coming back from time to time to, to see, you know, the type of traffic that is uh, mainly going through my network, and you can see here that uh, Roblox is a fairly popular game on uh, on my daughter's uh, iPad. So I expect, yeah, that uh, that's her and that's her um, her uh, her friend's iPad. Uh, that are being the big consumers here streaming also. Yes, there she is again. <laughs> uh, kids and their YouTube videos. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can get a lot of insights here from uh, from what type of traffic is flowing through your network. If you look at the map section, uh, I've uploaded a picture of my of sort of my house layout, and then I've added uh, these uh, walls myself to sort of def and define you know what type of walls they are, how solid they are and uh, where my access points are placed. And by doing this, uh, the administration software can uh, give you an idea of 
the of, of, of yeah uh, the coverage in your house uh, if there are any sort of uh, black spots or if you should be good with uh, where you have uh, placed your access points and the number of access points and everything looks fine in uh, in my setup here if we look at the devices tab we have the the router my switch and my two access points here and we can see that I have an option to upgrade these uh, three devices. And again, like the software, upgrades are fairly frequently released uh, to, uh, to you. So this is really, again, great. Some of my old access points, you know, you would be fortunate if you got an update like once a year. But these are more like once a month uh, that the updates are released. So they really keep, uh, keep uh, yeah, uh, releasing uh, fixes and, and stuff like that. If you look at the clients tab, we can see uh, right now all of my devices, if we just switch here to see only the wireless ones, we have a, a fairly nice overview that uh, you can see here, I have uh, some of my IoT devices. Uh, these, um, This is my main LAN. Uh, so this would be iPads and stuff like that. Um, and we can also switch to just see, you know, uh, devices connected to my network uh, for the last three days, uh, you know, what type of traffic they have generated, uh, when they locked on, when they locked off, uh, stuff like that. Actually, if you just switch back to clients, one of the useful uh, things I've found is you can sort by signal to identify if some of your installations have, uh, for some reason, connected to an access point further away than the uh, than the nearest one uh, to that device uh, and if that is the case uh, you can click reconnect and that forces the device to sort of uh, yeah uh, find a, a new access point and hopefully uh, one that is closer to it so you will get sort of the optimal um, signal strength to that uh, specific device let's just look at the settings section which is really complex uh, but what i'll just uh, focus on here is um, the networks that i told you guys that i would create so i have my main network here i have my iot network here and then i have a guest network and the idea is that uh, my uh, main network is uh, sort of not regulated at all that uh, unlimited bandwidth and no rules about the devices being able to communicate uh, to each other but that these two networks, the IoT network and the guest network, they are not allowed to communicate with my main network and that I have bandwidth capacity uh, rules set on both networks. And the way you do this is by uh, going to your routing and firewall section, selecting the firewall and selecting the LAN in. And here I have a rule, uh, manual rule created that if we look at the IoT one, that uh, uh, this rule is to reject uh, traffic, uh, all traffic, and it's uh, the source of the traffic that I want to uh, to uh, prohibit is uh, traffic coming from my IoT subnet going to my guest subnet. That this is not allowed, uh, and that all connections are dropped. And same principle just then goes from uh, from IoT to the mainland. So this is a fairly straightforward part about how you limit that uh, networks cannot uh, talk to each other. The other part uh, about um, bandwidth are done using user groups, where you can see here I have created a default group, which is my network, uh, main network, and then a guest and an IoT group. And both of these then uh, can be said that they are limited to a specific amount of uh, yeah uh, megabytes per second that they can use. So this is a very comprehensive uh, administration package and uh, you have so many options here, uh, much more than I, I can cover in, uh, in just one of these videos. Uh, and again, I'm uh, in no way an expert in this, I, but this is uh, this this is took me like a couple of hours to set up. And, uh, and I think, you know, it's it's fairly intuitive and there are a lot of good videos out there to to show you how to to do stuff like this. So uh, feel free to ask me a question or else I can refer you to some of the videos that I've used myself uh, setting up this stuff. But again, uh, this is really, really good stuff uh, where you have a lot of options to configure your network in the way that you want to make sure that it's secure and that you, uh, you make sure that capacity is used where you want to 
and you have the ability to to see actually what what traffic is running through your network and is if in, if anything is is looking out of place and should be monitored more closely so buying this uh, equipment was pretty much perhaps my best decision in uh, 2018 Yes, it's not uh, cheap. Uh, again, it was roughly around 500 euros, uh, but uh, it has really, uh, it has really been, you know, uh, every penny for it. Uh, one thing that actually surprised me a lot was that I mainly bought this, uh, like I told you uh, in the beginning of the video, which was recorded like almost half a year ago now. Uh, my initial thought was to get segregation of my networks and to have a better security um, setup. But uh, one of the things uh, that I quickly found out was that I actually increased my throughput uh, going uh, through my internet connection on the downstream with uh, roughly around 33%. Uh, and I, I double and triple checked this, and it is still valid uh, and something you know that I did not expect. But it probably uh, goes to the USG uh, with you know just no nonsense but a lot of power uh, within that unit that uh, that I actually saw that uh, yeah increase in, uh, in in my in my download speeds so so very uh, very uh, pleased about that part the administration part. Uh, the cloud key again. It, it, it it's very easy to to uh, to set up. Uh, there are a lot of good guides there out there, and and if you uh, if you can't find them, uh, give me a give me a comment, uh, and I'll 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 send you some of the links that I've uh, that I followed. It, it's fairly easy to to do the initial setup. It took me a uh, perhaps an, an hour of uh, of uh, fiddling around and watching these uh, these videos. And then I was pretty much up and running. Um, the switch uh, you could do without it. Uh, I think it still makes sense for me to do the PoE part uh, using that. So so I'm pleased with it. And it's probably not the last PoE router that I switch. Sorry, that I that I buy. These um, the Nano HD uh, access points extremely powerful. Uh, works very well are not that big so again acceptable to have uh, within <laughs> visible range in a household like mine uh, the wife accepts them and she doesn't necessarily love them but uh, i haven't gotten any nasty comments about how they look in the house so that's good so uh, uh, yeah uh, well worth uh, money and and something that i would uh, recommend to everybody that is uh, fiddling around with uh, smart home devices like me where you quickly end up with a lot of uh, simultaneously connected devices and stuff that you don't want necessarily to be on your home network. So uh, yeah, uh, really good stuff. And again, probably not my uh, my last ubiquity buy. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, have a great day. Leave a comment if you need any uh, recommendations or tips with, the, with this or else I'll just uh, see you in my next video. Have a quick one.